the key to percent notes, increase, decrease, is this. Is over of equals percent over 100. So uh, whatever numbers with the is is going to be up here. Whatever is your total value is going to be down here. Of is going to be down here. Percent is really per 100, which is really saying divided by 100. So when you say 50%, you're really saying 50 divided by 100. 50 divided by 100 is half, right? So that's why 50% is really half. Anyhow, we need to memorize this and use this proportion to be able to solve these types of questions. So on number one, it says, what number is 40 of 35? So we don't know the number. It says what number, right? So we don't know the is. Whoa, that's not what I wanted. We don't know the is. So we don't know the is, but we know the percent and we know the of. So let's start by doing a uh, proportion. One fraction equaling another fraction. And the 40%, we already know that that's going to be always the percent over 100. And we know that the of is the denominator. So we're going to put 35 in the denominator. And it says what number is. We don't know the is once again. So we're going to put an x up here. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, on the previous section, we learned how to solve these proportions by cross-multiplying. Um, one suggestion that I would say is to cancel out zeros. So you reduce your fraction to make it a little easier. And then you have four tenths. Now that's a lot easier to work with. And you could even make it easier by reducing four tenths to what? Two fifths. That's right, two fifths. Okay, so you really have um, x over 35 equals 2 over 5. So we're going to cross multiply. We're going to say x times 5 is going to equal, so that's x times 5, that's 5x, and it's going to equal 35 times 2. Yay? Yeah. So that's going to equal 70. 35 times 2 is 70. So we have a simple one, uh, one step equation. We're going to get rid of that 5 by dividing by 5, dividing by 5, and you will get x equals 14. So what number is 40% of 35? 14 is 30% of 35. 14 is 30% of 35. I mean 40% of 35. Let's move on to the next one. Again, we're still using these same notes up here. Let me uh, bring these to the front. So this next one, number two, says 19 is what percent of 76? So we have 19 is, 19's up here with the is. What percent, we don't know the percent, of 76 of 76? Really easy to set up, straightforward. Two fractions. The is happens to be 19 in this case. 19 is. What percent? You don't know the percent, but you know it's going to be over 100. Of 76. Okay? So, you could try to reduce this fraction on the left side, but it's easier just to use your calculator. Right? Let's, let's use our calculator. Let me set up exactly what we're going to do on the calculator. We're going to go 19 times 100. I might as well do that, that's 1900, equals 76 times x, I might as well do that, 76x. So we have this simple equation, and we want to get rid of 76. So what do I do? Divide by 76. Now, I don't know this, I want to go with the calculator. What's 1900 on the calculator, divided by 76? 25? Awesome. So luckily, it worked out very nicely 25 is X now what was the original question it says what percent so to to be to understand our answer 19 is 25 percent of 76 19 is 25 percent of 76 uh, technically that would mean that if you doubled 19 you would get 48 uh, no I'm sorry 38 and that would be half of 76. Or if you tripled 19, that would be 75% of 76. If you got 19 times 4, that would actually give you 100% of 76, which is 76. Number three, 
Um, 60 is 80% of what number? So once again, 60 is, there's a 60 on the is part, 80%, that's the 80% over 100, of what number? You don't know the of, so you're going to put an X down here on the of. So once again, let's set it up. Fraction equals fraction. The is part is 60. The of part, we don't know. The 80% is 80 over 100. What could we do to make this cross multiplication a little easier, even if we have... Take out the zeros, cancel them out, that's right. So you could reduce 80 over 100 to become 8 tenths, and you could even go further and reduce 8 tenths by 2 and get what? 4 fifths. You could have a 4 on top and a 5 on the bottom. So this is as easy as it gets, and of course the calculator is doing the work anyway. We're going to cross multiply 60 times 5 on a calculator, if you want, is 300. And then you hit the, your, put the equal sign, and then x times 4... That is 4x. So what I really have is a simple one-step equation, dividing both sides by 4, dividing both sides by 4, and we will get uh, x equals what? 75. So 75 is our answer right there. And let's really understand what that means. It means that 60 is 80% of 75. 60 is 80% of 75. Okay, so we will have some of these types of questions on Friday's quiz. Let's move on. Number four, um, it says, give me one second, let me, here we go. So number four, it says find percent increase or decrease. So first of all, this is your, new, this is your original price, $76, your new price is 60. So is it an increase or decrease? Definitely decrease. Now, it's saying find the percent, but in order for you to find the percent, you need to know how much it actually decreased in dollar amounts. So how much was the actual decrease? 16. Okay, so when I say how much is the actual decrease, notice, I'm saying how much is the actual decrease of what? Of 76, right? How much is the decrease, and even increase, how much is the increase of the original price 76? Right, so in this case, we're going to set it up, once again, fraction equals fraction, and the increase, or the decrease, is how much? $16, right? Yeah. So you put 16 on the is, because that is the decrease of the original amount, 76, and the question is to find the percent. You don't know the percent, but you know for sure it's going to be over 100, because percent means per 100. So let's uh, cross multiply here, and with the calculator, 16 times 100 is 1600, equals 76x. And with the calculator, let's divide by 76, divide by 76, cancel, cancel, x equals, what's seven, uh, 1600 divided by 76? Say again? 21 point... Zero something? Point zero five? Twenty one point zero five? So the answer that we're gonna write, even though it's twenty one point zero five something percent, we're not gonna write it like that. We're gonna say that X and listen instead of equals, we're gonna use a squiggly line and say about twenty one percent. So that's our answer right there. X is about twenty one percent. Now, there is sometimes uh, percentages that they use with decimals, like when you buy a house. I think my interest rate on my house was 4.75%. So it is out there, but for this uh, $76, $60, let's just go with the uh, rounding off. Number five, calculate the total, the total cost, including taxes. So we could say that we want to find out what the tax is going to be off of $40 and use cr cross multiplication to do that. But the easiest way to do it is with the calculator. Um, if you wanted to find out just the taxes, you would take the 7.5% and change it to a decimal. So you would move it two spaces over. So that would be a 0 .075. And with your calculator, you take 0 .075 and multiply it by 40. Okay, 
What answer does that give you? Three, exactly? Okay. So three, that means $3 is the taxes, right? So $3 is your taxes on $40 jeans. So if you go buy some $40 jeans, you're going to have to pay $43. Bucks. Um, however, instead of just finding the three, there's that little trick I showed you the other day that instead of looking at your decimal as 0 0.075 and then adding your original price to it, you could put a one right in front of there and make it a 1.075. This is only when you're calculating taxes and you want the total sale price or the total price including taxes. If you go 1.075 times the 40, you see what happens there is that the one, it's kind of like distributed property, one times 40 is 40, and then you'd have to add the 0.75 times 40, which is the $3 taxes. So when you do this on the calculator, it should give you the exact total amount, $43. Yay? Pretty cool, right? Um, we're going to have a worksheet, and it's going to have more of original and new, and you need to tell me percent increase or decrease. Why am I writing on that thing? Sorry. So, like right here, on number five, it would be decreasing by 16, and you would set up your proportions, your two fractions, and so on and so on. But it does get more fun. Over here in the second portion of today's homework, we're going to have uh, the total price. So they give you the price of what you're purchasing, and then they tell you to calculate that sales tax. So in different states, you have different sales tax. Uh, so what would your total price of 95 be with 6%? Um, again, if you wanted just the taxes on it, you would say 95 times 0 0.06. But if you wanted to include the price with the taxes, you would say 95 times 1.06. Now, it even gets more fun when we start talking about discounts, right? We're going to have discounts. So you're going to have a certain item that you want to buy for $25 and there's a sale going on, 15% discount. Or let's say you work at a certain store and uh, those uh, employees get a 15% discount. You want to buy something that's $25, you want to find out how much it's going to cost you. Well, you're going to have to do 25 times, move it over two spaces, 0.15. And that'll be the actual discount that you get to subtract from the original price, right? So if it says find the discounted price, you have to find what the actual discount is and then subtract it from the original price. You guys with me? And last but not least, we have these super fun ones where you have to buy something and there's a sale and of course you want to calculate the out the door price with the taxes, right? So I'll, I'll explain that more on a different video.